do not feel the cough of evil doer. That's right. Nor be envy of the work of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and willow as the green herd. It said, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desire of your heart. Father in heaven, we thank you right now for how you have woken up this morning to see this beautiful day. No matter what the world's saying, no matter what's going around, but you are blessing your saints. You are looking after your children. I don't think nobody here is hungry, nobody outdoors. We paying all our bills, nobody lights out. We know you the provider. No matter what's going on, Lord, you take care of your children. And we thank you for it. Like the song said, we're going to give you the praise, Lord, for all you've done for us. Without you, Lord, we wouldn't even be here today. We'd be somewhere else, in the grave, we don't know to tell the world that I'd be on the street, like sleeping on the bridge. And I thank God every day every time I see someone that on the bridge, I said, Lord, I think it could have been me. It could have been any of us, just like that. And it still can be. And I just thank you. Oh, that's thank you, God, for how you just woke me up this morning, how you've been taking care of. How you know about what's going on during the day. You make way, you open doors. And Lord, we ask you to bless this service today. Lord, anoint your speaker today. Let your word speak through them, Lord. Let your word go forth. Let somebody be delivered this morning. Lord, somebody needs to be set free, Lord. And set them free. Somebody about to make them be healed. And we know you are healed already. But Lord, maybe they might not know it. But Lord, check their body. Check their mind. Some of us' mind is bad right now, Lord. We frustrated. All kind of things are going, but Lord, we know you can come. You can come to see. And Lord, come up right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church of God in Christ, celebrating life and ministry focused on God, 2 Corinthians 4 and 5. The ninth pastor and wife anniversary, May the 2nd, that is next Sunday, May the 2nd, 2021, at 11.30 a.m. And the pastor requests that all families please sit together. Join the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ virtually for any of these worship opportunities by means of social media. Facebook, Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. Instagram, Greater New Bible Way Cogent. Join us, one, join us all. To God be the glory. Thank you. Amen. As I always say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we shall, and I said, and we shall, and we shall, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you rejoicing on today? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So glad, amen, to see you again. Amen. As always, amen. I'm, I was glad. I'm like David now. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's something about when we come together, saints. Amen. Where the presence of God is. Amen. It, it, it allows you to forget about all the things that you've gone, gone through. Amen. On the past week. All the troubles. All the heartaches. All the heartbreaks. All the letdowns. Amen. Sickness in your body. Amen. Disappointments. Amen. When we come together, we forget about all those things. Amen. And we come into his presence where the praises are going up. Amen. And we let God have his way. Hallelujah. How many know that he's worthy to be praised? He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be glorified. Amen. When you send the praises up, the blessings of the Lord come down. Amen. And he heals you. Everywhere you hurt. 
Amen. I thank him on today. I thank him. I thank him on today. Listen, we're getting ready to go higher in the Lord. I'm here at the podium. Amen. I want to present to you, introduce to some and present to others the man of God that is getting ready to come to this sacred desk. And that's going to bless our hearts for today. For he, we know, amen, great new Bible way, he is a man that needs no introduction, amen. But, but for those that are viewing us, amen, he is a son of this church, amen. amen. He is a great son of this church, amen. Been in this church all of his life, amen. For his parents were great leaders, amen, in this church, amen. So we thank God for him, amen, that is getting ready to come today. And to present the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The messenger for the day, that is none other than Elder Frederick Quinn. Good morning. Joy rest upon my heart. Oh, bless his name. We repeat after me, if I love, we show the world we are his disciples. I commit my love. Would you bow your heads briefly? Father, in the name of Jesus, your people come not to hear my message, but to hear a word from you. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. What season is this? Anniversary season. Hallelujah. Give honor to God, Pastor Rogers, who is a Lord worker in the church. He is diligent in the services of our God. He is still giving of himself without reservation. He deserves our prayers and support. To the First Lady, First Lady Emeritus, my First Lady, and all of God's people, it is always a pleasure to be in your presence because I believe that the heart of a righteous person is a sanctuary of God. If you go with me to Jeremiah, the third chapter, and the 15th verse, I will read to you from the words of the Lord. It says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. People sometimes ask me, why is God not answering my prayer? If you're not saved or not in the church, Jeremiah 59 and 2 says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins has hid his face from you. If you're in the church and you're wondering why the Bible says in Psalm 66 and 18, if I regard iniquity, that sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear. You see, in John, 1 John, the first chapter and the fifth verse says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. And that we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. Amen. I want you to know that you cannot ask God for something that is against his will. Amen. If you pray a prayer that's against God's will, uh -huh. he won't answer you can't be praying for somebody's spouse to die so you can be with their husband. Asking God to kill your supervisor. It don't work like that. First John 5 and 14 said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, yes, he hears us. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about John. I like John. John, the 20th chapter and 31st verse says, These are written that you might believe and that you might believe and have life. And John, he puts something in every chapter that you might believe. And then he wrote the epistle of John. In 1 John, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse in the epistle of John said, these things are written 
unto you that believe that you may know that you have eternal life. The Holy Bible was written by men of God. It took a period of 1,600 years and 40 different authors to write the Bible, the 66 books that make up the Bible. It took 400 years between the 39 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books of the New Testament. From Genesis to Revelations, one unified story. The Bible was completed in 95 AD. Scholars will say Revelation was completed in 95 AD. There are four Gospels written by four individuals. Each Gospel has a personal interpretation. Some people say, why do we need four Gospels? They seem to be contradictory. They are not. If a thousand dollar bill fell in this area and it created an incident and each individual had or was required to give their interpretation of what transpired, if you read their report, if you read each report, you would wonder if they were all there and if they all saw the same thing. It would depend on the location of the individual that was making the report. When you read the book of Matthews, Matthews is writing to the Jews. He's writing to prove that Jesus deserves the right to the throne of David. He's writing to prove to the Jewish nation who Jesus is and to prove that Jesus is the seed of David. Yes, so he begins with the genealogy of Joseph, which brings him into the family of David. Now Luke, some say, was a physician and historian. Luke starts at the bottom with somebody named Heli. Luke, the third chapter, the 23rd verse, he is not the father of Joseph. He must be Mary's father. Matthew's coming down through David comes through Solomon. That's Matthew, the first chapter, the sixth verse. Luke, coming up from the bottom, comes through David's son, Nathan. Luke goes all the way to Abraham. And then he goes from Abraham to Adam. And then Luke says, Adam, the son of God. We never heard of Adam being the son of God, but it's right there in Luke, the third chapter, in the 38th verse. Luke contributes a quarter. That's 27.3% of the New Testament. Now, when you get to Mark, Mark is excited. He's an excited believer. He, he, he acts like he just got saved. And he talks a little bit about John the Baptist, and then he starts talking about the miracles that Jesus performed. Now, when you get to John, John doesn't deal with the genealogy of Joseph or the genealogy of Mary. John writes a unique book, and he starts off by saying, I want you to know who Jesus is. John says, I want you to know who Jesus is. So John starts off by saying, in the beginning was a word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. He starts off by talking about the word, and then he turns the word into a person, and he, the person becomes first, and John, the first chapter, the 
14th verse says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. But when it gets down to the 14th verse, it says that the Word was made flesh and dwell among us. He was talking in reference to Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, bless his name. This morning, I want to talk about the Gospel of John. It is possible to have a unique relationship with Jesus. This is true, or this is proven by the fact that when Jesus was preparing for the crucifixion or preparing to die on the cross, John said, Jesus, who among us will portray you? And Jesus said, watch, when I sop in the pot, who I give it to? When he gave the sop to Judas, John knew who would betray Jesus. The other disciples thought that Judas was going to take care of business or some business expense. But John knew that he was going to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And Jesus said, what you do, do quickly. The next day, Jesus was hanging on the cross. John was the only disciple standing there. All the other disciples were behind closed doors. There are three Marys are there. One Mary was Mary, the wife of Cleophagus. She is the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalene, she was there, and if you asked her why she was there, she would tell you that Jesus cast seven demons out of her, and she was there because she loved her. Yes. All the disciples were behind closed doors except John. After Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples went fishing. Peter took them out. He took the group out. Fishing and they fished all night long. Yes, yes. And they didn't catch nothing. Some of y'all are fishing. Come on, let's you know. And you ain't catching nothing. Come on, let's you know. Because you're trying to use your own method. Come on, come on. And they were fishing. Yes. Trying to use their own method and they were not succeeding. Yes, until Jesus spoke from the show. Mm -hmm. Said, Do you have any meat? He said, cast your nets on your right side. Yeah. They cast their nets on the right side, and fish began to swim into the nets. Yeah. They caught 153 fish. Oh. Somebody said, somebody said, that must be Jesus. Yeah. Said, so look at Jesus. Yeah. Peter was in the bottom of the boat asleep. Yeah. He jumped up. Jumped up and jumped in the water. And swim to shore. Jesus was sitting there, fish cooking. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. John had a unique message. He starts teaching in John, the first chapter. He starts talking about the Logos, the L-O-G-O-S, the Logos. The Logos in the Greek is the Word of God. The totality of the Gospel is the Logos. And when there's something in the Logos that speaks to you, that Logos then becomes a rhema word. A rhema, that R-H-E-M-A, a rhema word. The rhema word of God, sometimes you hear somebody preaching and or you read something in the Bible or uh, you hear some preacher preaching and he sounds good but it really doesn't relate to you. But every once in a while every once in a while it seems like the preacher ain't talking to nobody but you. And you're reading in your private study and it seems like that scripture is just written for you. That word is written for you. When the 
the word speaks directly to you, then the Logos becomes a rainbow. Somebody here this morning is going to have a rhema word from the Lord. Oh, bless his name. I've been waiting for somebody to speak into my life. In chapter 1, he speaks to the Logos. But when he gets to the third chapter of John, he talks about something that's not talked about very much today. I was listening to one of the old sisters sing a song I heard 40 years ago. It said, this is the church of God in Christ. You can't just join it. You got to be born. Yes, this is the church of God in Christ. All right. I know that a lot of you have heard that song. But when I heard it, it was something about that song that stirred up something in me. As I looked around in the church, and I had some problems with it, in 1961, Bishop Patterson was having problems with that song, yes, because people have been joining the church all the time. We got a whole lot of people in the church that's never been born Again. I know they haven't been born again because they are still doing everything they were doing when they were in the world. John tells us of the encounter of Jesus with Nicodemus. In John the third chapter and the first verse, Nicodemus was a leader in the Sanhedrin court or, or, or council. Nicodemus came to Jesus one night. And most of us condemn Nicodemus because he came to him by night. Some say he was afraid because he didn't want people to see him talking to Jesus. Some say he was embarrassed, but you have to give Nicodemus credit. He did come to Jesus. We have some people in the night of their sickness. The night of their despair, the night of their trouble. And they are still trying to find another way out. But I want you to know when the darkness of your life, when the blackness of your life is closed in on you, you need to know how to find Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent from God. John 3 and 2. No man could perform these miracles unless God be with him. Nicodemus said that Jesus was a teacher sent from God. What he didn't realize was he was God come to teach. Oh, that's his name. Nicodemus said no man could do these things except God be with him. And Jesus stopped him. Jesus said, flattery is not going to get you or give you any special access to God's kingdom. John 3 and 7 said, marvel not. John 3 and 5 said, Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. When people start talking and speaking in tongues, people start prophesying a wave of God's glory. The old saints would say, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you can't get with us. 
Don't fool yourself. There's a whole lot of folk that can't get with us. God is taking this church back to where it began. He's trying to bring us back to where he started us. But we got a whole lot of people that can't get with the program. Spiritual people live on a whole different wavelength. Jesus said, unless you've been born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is the ruler of the Jews. Jesus spoke to the level of his interest. And we've got to learn how to speak to the level of other people's interests if yes. we are going to win souls yes. for Christ. Yes. Yes. Because he was a ruler, he dealt with life, yes. deaths, and births. Yes. If you are not born again, yes. you can't see the kingdom of God. Yes. Nicodemus said, I'm an old man. Yes. How can you talk about me being born again? Yes. Said, how can I enter a second time into my mother's womb? Yes. Nicodemus, yes. if time could reverse the process, Amen. take you back to a, from an old man to a young man, from a young man to adolescence, from your adolescent stage to being a child, from a childhood to being an infant. Go back into embrogeny and be un, an unborn fetus redeposited into your mother's womb. If it were possible, back would turn backwards. Old time in your flight, make me a child again just for one night. Jesus says that when you come back, you will still be flushed and long. I'm not talking about being born over. I'm talking about being born again. Being born of the Spirit. John, the 20th chapter, and the, 30, the 31st verse says, He gave His purpose for writing this unique gospel. These things are written that you might believe that Jesus is a Christ. And believing you might have life through Jesus. If it was saved, or it has been saved, that if you wanted to carry the gospel into the world, or any foreign country, other than spending the money to translate the, and translate the entire Bible into a book, if you only transfer it, transport it, the gospel of John, the gospel of John would be enough to evangelize any people in any country. John proves with significant scriptures and effective miracles what we believe to be proof that Jesus is God. Who Jesus is. Who we want him to be. But this is the fact that John tried to make it a point to make sure you know who Jesus is and who he was. Oh, bless he is. He, here he is. All over. And here we are today. Trying to make allowances for sin. You can't talk about some people because they were born that way. People get up and lie. And we spend 30 minutes trying to make it sound like the truth. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. We've gotten to the point where we're trying to counsel, counsel what we used to cast out. All right. But I want you to know 1 John, 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, the 
9 verse says, yes. Know ye not yes. that the unrighteous yes. shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Be not deceived, yes. neither fornicators. Yes. That's you know them folk out there having sex right. that ain't married. Nor adulterers. That's the one that's married that's out there having sex with other folk. Idolaters. That's those folk out there wishing for their cars and their jobs and their girlfriends and their trophies. Oh, bless his name. Idolaters or feminists. That's the, what you call it, LB, whatever. I can't keep up with all those synonyms. Uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, neither thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, or revilers, or extortioners, extortioners, that's the people you thank for your friends that's ripping you off. Oh, bless Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. You know, I haven't always been saved. We haven't always been saved. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 11, verse, and such were some of you. But you are washed, but you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. God don't want you to go to hell. God don't want you in hell. But you got to make up in your mind that you want to see Jesus. A lot of people are going to hell. And God's not sending them. If you were on a ship and the storm and the captain said the ship is taken on water, you need to put your life jackets on. If you don't put your life jacket on and you drown, it's not the captain's fault. It's your fault. John, the third chapter, the 16th verse said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you want to see Jesus, if you want to see Jesus, if you want to see Jesus, you need to be born again. Hallelujah. I want you to know that all you got to do is give your life to Jesus. Romans, the 12th chapter, and the first verse says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Somebody wrote a song a long time ago. It said... I've had my share of life's ups and downs. God's been good to me, and the doubts have been to you. So I guess you could say, he's blessed me. Because there's never been a time in my life when he didn't see me through. To anyone should ever write my life story for whatever reason that might be he'll be there between every line of praise and glory because Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me Mr. Bob, y'all on your way back to the seat Speak 
because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services.